Steve? Thanks, Scott. Hey, everybody. Happy Wednesday evening to you all. Um, for those of you who tuned in expecting to hear Dan, um, I was the uh, presenter last week and I'm the presenter this week and in the near future uh, will continue to be the presenter for the trade of the week. So um, I gave a little bio on myself last week. If you don't know who I am, I did uh, pop in in the chat window uh, a link to my um, trade ideas bio page. So feel free to have at that. If you don't know who you're listening to here today, um, I've been using trade ideas since the inception. I'm a good old friend of Dan's back since 98, and Brad even longer. And I'm a trade ideas user number three in, uh, in the back end system. So been around, cut my teeth, and I'm happy to share some stuff with you guys tonight. Real quick, uh, we'll do the, uh, the lawyer speak. Um, Trade Ideas is a publisher of content, and at any time you should not consider anything here to be uh, directly related to uh, investment or trading advice. We are not registered investment advisors. If you're looking for that kind of advice, you need to go to an RIA. We're simply just happy-go-lucky guys trying to make a good product here and um, you know help people make some money. Let's go through here to the quick agenda that I put together. Uh, I like to do a market recap and maybe talk a little bit about where we've been, where we are, and where we could be going. Uh, we will talk about some of the AI Holly recap from today and yesterday. Um, and of course, the trade of the week, which is what this is geared on. We'll go over the trade of the week, which was RGLD, and maybe even catch up a little bit on last week's uh, trade of the week, IBB, and uh, look at some possible targets for those. And I put together a quick little presentation on Risk Management 101, which makes perfect sense for a forum like this when we're talking about a trade of the week. You know, one of the most common questions are going to be, well, how long do I hold? How, how much size do I use? How many shares? Where, where should I get out? And how should I set my stops? So we can go over a couple of, of those uh, those items. And then I've got, um, as usual, uh, some more setups that I'm watching. We'll go ahead and go through those setups and talk about my thinking on those setups and uh, enter those into the Trade Ideas price alerts. So those of you that do have the uh, premium membership with the AI and odds maker, you'll be able to accept that cloud link with those um, alert triggers that we're going to put in. And uh, we'll talk about those as well. So let me hit that off up and open up my trade ideas. Um, let's see here, got a couple of windows. You know, when we do the trade of the week, primarily we are pulling these trades off of the, the trend change lubricant, which is, um, real quickly, I'll just go through and give you a quick methodology on this. If I expand the daily chart here and zoom out, we're going to start to see, um, you know, some uh, some patterns that are going to show up here, which is primarily stocks that are down on the year, pretty beaten up, but are trying to turn around and break their downtrends and um, and move back up. And especially if you throw in some short float percentage in there, it sure does add some steam. This is the stock right here. I just haven't even seen it until now for some reason. But WAC, this is kind of the typical uh, type of pattern we're looking for when we select the trade of the week on the weekends. And real quickly, just to show you how simple this particular configuration is, basically it needs to be up 1% from the close. But here's where the real um, magic comes in. Uh, we have two year, uh, two ranges. Uh, the first one is our position and year range, and the second is the position in the 20-day range. So for the year, we are using our filters on the maximum side to only show us stocks that are in the bottom third of their 52-week range. So they cannot be more than 35% off their lows. So that first layer guarantees us that we're going to see something down on the year. But we're looking for stuff that's getting ready to make a turn. So. We're only looking um, at stocks that are a 1% away. In other words, they are 99% off of their 20-day range lows and getting ready to make a 20-day range high, 1% away from that. And so that's really the gist of it. I've got 150,000 shares, um, average daily volume in there, uh, which is new. So if you don't have um, the current uh, trend change lubricant configuration, I have added this because I'm seeing a few stocks in there that are sneaking in that are below my liking for average daily volume. So that's the thinking and that's the configuration on trying to find these types of setups. And you can see as I go down the list here, a lot of these you know, charts kind of look the same. So let's get into the, uh, oh, what do I have? Actually, what lost my train of thought here. What are we doing first? Market recap. Let's do that. 
Um, a lot of you uh, have the Trade Ideas charts, which are awesome charts. I love how they are integrated into the alerts and into the top lists. Uh, but I'm still waiting on just one simple indicator, like I think maybe some people are, and that is the 10-day the moving average. So for now, for illustration and teaching purposes, I'm using the 10-day moving average, the 20-day moving average, and this 50-day blue line moving average, just for a couple of reference points. And I'll, I'll use this chart occasionally uh, as we go forward. So let's talk about where we were last Friday. Um, on the weekend, I went to work on the trend change lubricant, looking for some setups, and I didn't really find a whole lot. You know, the market we had today was a, a great day, um, but last week we were kind of running into slip and pickings on some of these setups that I was looking for. And a theme that kept popping in was, um, you know, gold looked like it was getting ready to go. And I just felt like uh, you know, I, the guys and I talked about um, uh, we don't like to make trade of the week picks to go short. A lot of people don't have the ability to go short. That's a whole different ball game. Sometimes you can't even borrow the shares you need. Maybe some people are trading out of their IRA or self-employed IRA accounts, and those are designated long-only accounts. So uh, we, we felt like gold might have been a decent safety harbor uh, if the market did, in fact, turn this week, which it didn't. Um, but nonetheless, we had a real nice setup here in RGLD. This day right here uh, was as of Friday. So there's Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday we've got on the screen here. And we threw a bit of a curveball at the trade of the week people this week. Um, in the past, we've had uh, the email go out maybe an hour after the open uh, with a trade that just went live. Um, but in this case, we felt like if we waited too long on Monday morning, we were going to be uh, chasing. And so if you go back to the content of the trade of the week email, you'll see that I mentioned uh, you're going to want to probably buy this one on the open. The recommendation was to buy it on the open, even if it gapped up because it's kind of what we were expecting. And it is kind of exactly what we got. So our trade of the week entry was essentially, you know, right here on the open, which closed 53.98 is what they're calling it. And it is still in the money. Um, I'm happy to see just a little bit of slight retracement here. Uh, maybe one more day of slight retracement, and then it's ready to uh, gear up for a possible move higher. But um, that is the, the trade of the week and the methodology behind it. Again, we were looking for some conservative type moves. And if, if money was going to flow into gold and out of stocks, then this would have been uh, a gold. This is a gold miner. And we felt it would have been a, a decent, uh, safe call. Got a little bit ahead of myself because I did say we were going to talk about market recap. So those of you that have been tuning in uh, have seen me draw this line here for the last uh, two weeks now. And if I back away, you'll see this line starts to correspond with simply the highs in the daily chart here of the SPY. Um, yesterday uh, and the day before, I'm sorry, these few days in here, it looked like you know we were maybe getting ready to pull back and, and test this 200-day moving average or the 200 level. But I had said to everybody, we're going one direction or the other. I'm not sure which direction, but I think we're going to test this uh, upside resistance. And we did not pull back and retest the, um, the breakout first, which tells me there's still some energy pent up of potential energy in this market. You can see we had a pretty good, for lack of a better description here, just some sideways action for a good seven or eight trading days. We did not give up much on price. We gave up on time. We can consolidate in two ways. We can consolidate backwards in price, or we can consolidate sideways over time, and the latter being the more um, powerful of the two. So we popped out of that range today, and you know I again, this is a, it's a foregone conclusion. I feel like we are going to test this line again. And if I go out to a weekly time frame, you can see even more perspective of how this is coming into play on a weekly chart, touching these uh, upside candles uh, very intently. And we are very close to, once again, trying to test these levels after a pretty good uh, pullback and um, building a base camp here with that. Oops, let me go back to the daily with that sideways action. So. Uh, I mean, we are getting to these levels here. Let's call it 109, 109.30, 109.20, 109.25. Um, at the at this point right here, we are at 208. I'm sorry, we're going to we're going to go up to probably 209, and we're going to see what happens. I anticipate a ton of supply ready to be sold up here at these levels, and I expect a fight and a battle to to take place at these levels in the SPY. So, if you haven't been paying attention to this uh, downward trending line, whether it's on the daily or the weekly chart, it's very defined, and we're going to run into it here. We're we're got a, we're on a collision course for it, as far as I'm concerned. So that is where we are, and that's where we're probably going. 
Um, what happens when we get there? I mean, I, I honestly, I'll be surprised if we go through that line like a hot knife through butter. I, I fully expect a, a good uh, fight to be put up by the bears and the sellers at those levels. All right, so let's get back to what we had going on today. Um, we had a pretty good day with Holly and on the heels of another good day yesterday with Holly. Matter of fact, I don't have the updated graph. We're working on that back end, but Holly is now on its performance chart. She has uh, broken through the glass ceiling, so to speak, and is now in um, all new high territory for the year. So a nice impressive pull back, a pull away, pulling away from the S&P benchmark that we're uh, tra tracking against. You know, the spiders, the S&Ps are barely positive for the year, but uh, Holly's up over 40 points now for the year. And uh, we are real excited about that. I can only imagine the people that purchased the AI on Friday or over the weekend, they've had a pretty good week so far to, uh, to see what's going on. And let's delve into a little bit of what's going on today. You can see we came in today with just six strategies, two of them short, and it looks like uh, the short strategy was tried for, you know, good college try twice, and one loser, uh, one winner. I'm sorry, on the shorts here, excuse me, hang on a second, it looks like we had, uh, ah, I'm looking at this one, we had two attempts at two different shorts, Bollinger Band scalp here made 10 cents on two trades, and this one did not do very well at 53 cents, but the whole point is Holly is really designed to not only be an idea generator of new trades, but to help you manage your risk. You know, there's a tremendous amount of opportunity to learn from an unemotional trader like an AI like Holly and watch how the risk is managed. Let's just take a look at the, you know, Dan's uh, favorite column here, the non-exit P&L, and I think we really squeezed the most out of to this as we could have today. On the downside here, the worst trade was a 28 cent loser in Ross stores, but you can see the uh, the smart stop came into play and it could have been an 82 cent loser. Other than that, everything was pretty much in line. Uh, today, the big trade uh, was escalation exhibit over 20 bucks, and this is a strategy that's a base strategy designed to be held for up to five hours, and so we really let this one work today. Five hours in the world of uh, Holly is, is a long time because, as you guys know, she has to go home flat every night, and you know the S&Ps gapped up a whole point today, but old Holly had to start from zero, and she managed a way to scratch out over eight bucks today, so it was a really good day. Uh, it's all, always fun to watch when, when people are... Um, making money and, and enjoying the, uh, the show that is the unemotional trader uh, of AI, which is Holly. All right, um, let's see, where to next? I've got to keep cheat sheeting my way through this here. We did the Holly recap, we did the market and sentiment. So we did, let's do the trade of the week again, the review, and I have one more update on IBB. IBB was the trade of the week last year, last week, excuse me. It had a really nice close today, and I, I fully expected this to happen, uh, a little bit of give back, and as a matter of fact, I'm going to show you something else here, um, Twitter. This was me at the close yesterday. Um, if you're not following me, I'm at Today Trader, and I try and do my best to give out really good market advice in real time, try to be funny at times. And what I said last night at time stamped here, 15 minutes before the close, 12.45 West Coast time, I said I really like the way IBB, it's a textbook pullback here and a bounce off the 10-day moving average and IBB is likely higher prices tomorrow. That was a pretty bold statement, but I said it. And it's exactly what I expected. So I really want to imprint on you guys these types of entries. Don't be the person chasing this green bar up here. You're going to get a, a chance to reload some of these things. And it's exactly what IBB did. If you look at that 10-day uh, moving average, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. I always talk about it's okay to, to pierce it and play around and push through it and test it, but what we really want to see is a close above it. And when you see this type of nice movement and then a couple, two, three days of give back with a nice wick through that 10-day moving average and then a close back near highs, I'll buy that nine out of ten times, and I wanted to hopefully get that out in the, the trader's mix yesterday uh, and give people that heads up. I'm hoping somebody that followed me, maybe you took a chance on that, but uh, when I see this type of setup here, it is getting ready for higher prices, and I wasn't afraid to go ahead and throw that out there, and um, you know, it did exactly what I expected it to do. So I love it when stocks behave and when they do what they're supposed to do. Um, I had mentioned, I think, last week that the first stop could be around the 290 level. 
to maybe take half off. Well, we didn't quite get there. The following day, we pushed through a little bit, and then the reversal started. But now that we've regained a base camp here off that 10-day moving average, I fully expect 290 to come back into play. The reason I'm using that is these levels back here on those wicks. And then after that, uh, I expect um, the levels right up here around 300 where this trend line, this downward trend line is sloping. I'm using that as my primary target. So if you guys have your charts and you mark them up, you just quickly draw those two tops and you'll see where I believe IBB is going to be going. Um, all right, I'll, I happen to glance over at the question box for those that missed my handle. It is a Today Trader. I'll send that there in the uh, question answer box to everybody. Um, again, I try and you know give some good real-time uh, advice as to what I'm seeing in the market, and um, if I don't just tweet for the sake of tweeting. If I if I tweet, it's something I really fully believe in. So remember that. Um, all right, so that's what I'm looking at for IBB. If we go back to RGLD, which again was this trade of the week, you know some upside levels to watch. Uh, I really feel like this level right here, if it come, come into play, which is the 58 level, so to speak. I believe that is a good near near term target for that particular uh, trade. It's I'm going off of the tops right here. We found some sellers back here at these levels, so uh, that's where I think the sellers might jump back in. I fully expect uh, RGLD to maybe wash off a little bit more steam here than try and make a secondary push and move higher. All right, so I heard that a lot of you guys do already have the, uh, the price alerts, and the price alerts are really becoming one of my favorite uh, new toys to play with here. Um, I know Dan's got his price alerts going back for a couple of months. I like to clear mine out every week or, so, every week or two. Um, I think the last alert that I entered in here was uh, April 6th. So these are my only working and triggered alerts right now. It's up 2148, so I'm, I must be doing something right. Uh, that number is green. And again, for those of you who are new to trading, just remember, you are going to lose money when you start trading your own money. You may have a couple of great beginner's luck days, and that honestly can be probably one of the worst things that can happen to you because you get a false sense of security. It won't take long before you kind of get smacked in the, the reality of how uh, challenging it can be uh, trading real money because the emotions start to kick in. But this type of product, this type of tool right here is such a great paper trading mechanism because it can track everything you're doing and track the P&L in real time and uh, are a real fan of it. For those of you that attended the webinar on Monday with Jamie and myself, uh, we set some alerts here. It was, uh, let's see, the 11th of April. If I go ahead and highlight that block right there, uh, we gave this out in the cloud, and I'm going to do the same thing at the end of the webinar tonight. Uh, when I get through, I'm going to um, draw up some, some charts, and then for those that have the, the functionality, I can, uh, I can save this to the cloud, and we'll drop that in. But Anything you see on here that says P back fill, P back fill, we were talking that day about not trying to chase a lot of stocks, looking for levels that are good levels of pullback to try and bid back into. And as a matter of fact, I think I even set an example uh, last week. I used uh, the Solar City as an example. Let's go into Solar City and see what happened. And there it is. All right. We had had this green bar here, and I said, you know, I really feel like Solar City's had a nice move off the lows. You could probably get a better entry than chasing it up here. And I said it would probably go just below that candle on that last green candle. And that green line was the alert that I set. And that turned out to be the right alert. As you can see, we did get a pullback intraday. That green line was triggered. Not too much pain and a bounce back up. And we are ready to go again above this level here, which is a high of uh, 29.64. So since we're talking about Solar City, I actually have this on my list of stocks that I want to kind of go through today and talk about some of the reasons why I want to keep these on my watch list. But um, you know, I tell you, um, I think this is a great, great teaching tool. And um, the fact that you can collaborate it with people that you know and trust and have their homework show up on your screen and then pop up in real time, I think that's a tremendous benefit. And I just, I'm just i real excited to see where this functionality is going to go. So again, uh, Solar City has already been on my map, but I think it's setting up again for another push higher. Um, the way this action is, is uh, shaping up here, we've got some really good selling going on here at the tops of these levels, 2960 and 2964. 
Um, I really feel like this is going to be uh, violated here pretty soon, and I, I really like this type of action. It's lower highs, building, building, building. They just got to get through this um, through this level. So let's go ahead and set an alert as this first one. It's kind of Solar City uh, 2.0. Go ahead and right-click that, create price alert, and I do want to adjust that because I want it to be uh, 65, a new high, and this will be coded as a long. And we'll call this one Solar City 2.0. I think it wants to go higher. You know, if you know who Elon Musk is, Elon Musk has had a pretty good week. He sold a lot of pre-ordered uh, Teslas, and he landed a rocket back on its floating pad. And he's also a uh, founding member and has a lot to do with Solar City. So I don't think you want to bet much against Elon Musk right now. So I feel like the Solar City has another move coming. And uh, that's going to be our first price limit alert set. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to make sure that I'm going to sort by created and good. We got the most recently created on top. So we're going to build on this. All right. What's next? Um, let me cross Solar City off my list here. Uh, TRGP. And again, these are all stocks that I'm finding on, for the most part, the trend change lubricant, and then also we've got another one that uh, is one of Dan's favorites it's called Hidden Gems. Uh, one of the reasons it's called Hidden Gems is it's got, um, these companies have revenue. We've got some quarterly revenues. They're, they're not uh, um, non-revenue producing companies. These are legitimate companies with pretty good fundamentals, but still showing the same type of, uh, of setups. And right at the top of that one is Fitbit, and we'll come to that one in a second after uh, I think I've got that one set. Yeah, we'll come to that one in a second. But that's where I'm deriving a lot of these setups from. Let me zoom out a little bit on this TRGP. Okay. What I see on this TRGP was a nice breakout from these levels, but we kind of missed it. So we're going to look for maybe a 2.0 type setup. Big, big candle here on this push, and then a small little, uh, little small body uh, candle with a bit of a tail below it. A lot of times when I see a big move, we have what's called a go, pause, go. And this would be the go the day after a short bodied wick candle could be the pause and there could be a go again tomorrow. So I'm essentially just going to use the highs of this wick and add a penny, which is 32.46. So let's go up to that. I'll just right click at 51, adjust my price to 32.46. And this is going to be a long from above. And the note to myself would be uh, go, pause, go, question mark. And again, being descriptive in the notes, you know, is a really good practice when you're sitting like you are here right now, unemotional. The market's not open. You don't have money at risk. Um, you're looking at this stuff with an objective pair of eyes, with a Zen focus, and whatever you can do to try and remind yourself why it is you wrote that particular stock down, or why you wanted to watch it, why you set that alert there. It kind of nudges you in real time when the the pressure's on and the bells have rung and and the market's on, and you're trying in real time to decide if you want to take that trade or not. It's always really good um, to try and remind yourself what you were thinking in this you know, mellow state of mind, for lack of a better word. Uh, all right, so let me, uh, we got that one added to the list. And for those of you that don't know, it's, it's a red colored bar and it will turn green once it is triggered. If you ever do want to adjust those uh, limit alerts, you can go in or you can uh, essentially turn off your crosshairs here on these charts and then it gives you that tool and you can always adjust and it adjusts your price alerts in real time as well. Let me put my crosshairs back on. All right, we got that one set. All right, fit. Uh, those you that may recall, Fitbit was a uh, trade of the week back in the day. Uh, I think it was about a month ago that it was a trade of the week back in here. And it has reset up again. Um, not to mention it's the incredible amount of short interest in this one. I, I, I can't even begin to imagine, but Fitbit, it shows 86% short the float. I don't really know if that's true or not. I think we're pulling this data from Yahoo Finance, but that's the data we're going with. And you can see this giant, giant volume bar here. This is all the signatures of a short squeeze. These people got above their their uh, their safety zone, and now the stock price is getting away from them. You know, putting yourself in the uh, putting yourself in the shoes of the opposing side, meaning the short sellers. This is not something you'd want to see if you're wearing the opposing side's hat and you're wanting to go long because I, I really think we're going to have some follow-through tomorrow. So that being said, I don't really think it's a chase. 
with just one green bar today, I think there's going to be some more meat on this bone tomorrow, especially when you look at this volume bar and start to think, hey, the short squeeze could be on. You guys all remember what happened to X? I love using X as an example. This was showing up all over the place on these trend change lubricant type setups. And X had like a 57% short the float. Well, once it broke through that level, kind of like here, like FIT did today, the volume kicked in and the short squeeze was on. And it hasn't looked back. Matter of fact, these steel stocks have had nice consolidations and then another push through uh, the last couple of days. So FIT, let's go ahead and set our alert in FIT. Uh, for a high of tomorrow, which is going to be here the high 1719 today, and we didn't close quite there, so let's go to 1721-ish, and we'll just back that up and call it 1720, and I think there could be some follow-through tomorrow. Now again, if there's not follow-through, and we see kind of what we saw a minute ago in that, um, in that other one that we were looking at, I think it was TRGP, where I talked about the go, pause, go, this could, this could very well happen tomorrow. In, in Fitbit. And if it does, watch it the following day. It could be setting up for a go, pause, go, or it could just be setting up for a face ripping, short covering, ridiculously painful rally for the shorts. But either way, I want to know if we're going to make a new high tomorrow off the top of this. All right, let me cross these off as I do them here. Um, let's take a look at a few more. And again, it looks like Barry and uh, Jamie are doing a great job of answering your questions in there, so I can just keep uh, going along here. All right, again, BRS looks familiar. We haven't quite broken out, um, but we're real close. And today's move uh, was a nice short doji candle with a small body after a nice move yesterday. Again, we could be setting up here for a go, pause, go. We have a nice little hitch up here as well, but I think on this one, I want to get a head start and I want to know about it. If we can clear yesterday's candle, I think there's a good clean shot. We're going to go test that other level right here. So I'm going to set an alert on yesterday's high and penny above, which is 2097. So we'll go up to 2097. And just a note to myself, go pause, go, question mark early uh, early start at the uh, whatever this level is here at the prior high I can't get that level all right so we've got another alert set and it looks like it's right at the closing body of that too that wick as well that little wick above so um, that's that's a good looking alert for me I'm gonna go with that and just, let's just make sure that we are getting these things on our price alerts. All right, so we've got Solar City, TGRP Fit, BRS. Uh, the next one I want to look at, I've seen a couple of small, really crazy energy stocks, uh, Capstone coming back to life being one of them. Um, I don't, I'm not going to recommend this one. This one's kind of beaten up really bad. But there is another one that we used to uh, really like to follow back in the day called Clean Energy. Um, it's a T. Boone Pickens company that uh, builds filling stations for liquid nat gas. And I think, again, we had a nice move off the lows. Clean Energy has, um, uh, let's see what the short, what the short is. And, and uh, I don't think it's a huge short percentage. CLNE, 19%, not bad. So there's, there's definitely some short pain in there if this thing starts to turn back up. Um, but as far as my notes go, uh, I'm looking at just taking out this high today. We got some good rejection. Um, on making a new high and it came back and closed near yesterday's high. I think the top of that wick corresponds very nicely to the tops of these wicks over here. So I'm going to go ahead and create an alert for 325 in CLNE. And again, I have seen some of these little smaller junk energy stocks going. Smaller junk energy stock could follow suit. It's going to be my note to my future self. All right, so we've got that one in there as well. Pretty good. Um, let's see here. Oh, I'll revert quickly to a question. On Fitbit, is he saying that he would be buying if the price hits 1720 during the day? Let's go back to Fitbit. I'm saying that I would be, I would be buying. Let's look at our Fitbit. Let's look at our Fitbit price alert here. 
my trigger is 1720. So I'm going to pull the stock up and see what's going on. If the market's crashing to lows and everything else is crashing to lows and Fitbit is the only thing going, then probably not going to be a good buy candidate. But to answer your question, Mark, yes, I'm setting Fitbit at 1720 for all the reasons I'd mentioned earlier. I think there's going to be an explosion of short selling, uh, covering, short covering, short squeeze above that if we get above that mark. All right, CLNE, let's cross that off. I believe we got that one in the hopper as well. Uh, price change, CLNE, good. All right. Um, you know, I had been watching GoPro. We've been talking a lot about GoPro. As a matter of fact, that actually dovetails into another uh, slide that I did grab because uh, there's a new company out there and it's run by Howard Lindzen and a lot of the real smart people. It's got a lot of money behind it. It's called Spark Finance, Spark Fin. And if you haven't heard about it, you're going to hear about it. It's kind of like Tinder for stocks. On your smartphone, you just start looking at price charts and you just start swiping left or swiping right, whether you like it or not. And we have created a, uh, we were invited, I should say, to create a professional curated account on Spark Fin. And this is our current holdings right now. And this has been about the same holdings for about two weeks. And again, these are the same setups we've been going over with these trend change lubricants. They're all in the same category. But look what happened. As I said a minute ago, we've been talking about GoPro for a while. Yeah, we have. It's been on this list for a while. And today it had its move, 19% today in GoPro. Um, I didn't put it on the list because I'm not quite really sure where it's going to go from here. Today was just an absolutely huge move. But nonetheless, these are the types of moves we're looking for on these setups that we're creating. And GoPro probably had a pretty good short float set up as well. And you can see Fitbit has been on here as well, SolarCity, a lot of the same names. F-Cell is one of those smaller uh, junk energy names that I just talked about. Um, but if you haven't downloaded SparkFin, you can go to the, uh, it's on the Apple Store. You can load that into your, um, into your uh, phone. And if any changes are ever made, this is a curated list. You can keep an eye on what are some of the stocks that we're looking for on that SparkFin app. All right, so just since I mentioned GoPro, I mean, just a giant move. And what was the short float in GoPro? Just curious. Uh, single stock window, oh, 28, 29.8%, 30% short in GoPro, GoPro. Look at this volume today. I think something's going on in GoPro to where the shorts are going to have to start scrambling. I don't really have a recommendation on this one as to where to go. Again, just a giant, huge move. It could easily just give back what IBB did the other day and just do some pullbacks, or it could continue to go. I don't know. But either way, this is the beginnings of a possible short squeeze in GoPro. It had just a huge day today. All right. Uh, so the next one I had on the list to watch is Twitter. Twitter finally is starting to show some life, some interest. I was interested back here, and let me, for the sake of teaching again, bring over my moving averages. Until we get moving averages on our trade ideas charts, I will do this from time to time. I liked Twitter back here. It was showing signs of life, bouncing above its 10-day moving average, but then it failed and fell back down into this mess. Not interested, not interested, not interested. Pop back above. Um, keep an eye on it. Well, now, now I'm interested. It's back above its 10-day moving average. It's above its 20. It's above its 50. It closed on highs. Um, I really feel like Twitter is one to watch, and I've got my alert set around 1783, which again, let's see. I think I've already set this one, haven't I? 17. Now, that's an old alert that I've set, um, so we're going to go ahead and use this one. Uh, I am going to delete that alert. And we are going to replace it. So here's my Twitter. Um, let's go ahead and delete that one. It's just a right click. By the way, if you guys are highlighting, hitting the delete key and wondering why it's not leaving, you've got to go through the system. You've got to right click and you've got to do the delete price alert. All right, so we just took that price alert off. We're going to set a new one here. And uh, what's the high of today? 1783. I really feel like uh, I'm not not the high of today. Excuse me. This high going back here five or six days. This is the level that I am curious about. Um, I'm going to set an alert. Uh, let's see here. 1784 price alert. Second chance for Twitter. All right. And let me clear that one out and make sure that one's been cleared out. Oh, I had another Twitter in here. I want to get rid of that. There's a duplicate. 
I only want to be working with that one. All right, here's our working alert in Twitter, just above the high of that high going back six, seven days ago. Um, it may take a couple days to get there, but I think if it gets above there, the shorts are going to freak out, and that's exactly what we want on these types of trades. All right, uh, Twitter's done. Ooh, we're going to visit another old favorite, especially on the short side of the short float, Shake Shack. Um, going to go back again. And the same kind of story with Shake Shack. It was interesting at one point. It was interesting here. It was trying to maybe break out. It was following its nice 10 period movement average. And then we had earnings. And if you're not aware of when earnings are, you need to be aware of when earnings are because if you take a stock into earnings, you're pretty much gambling. And um, in this case, if you were gambling long and you knew when the earnings were coming out, you got punished pretty hard. So this is why I don't and Barry doesn't and Jamie doesn't and Dan doesn't and Brad doesn't trade into earnings when you know earnings are coming. You're, you're losing all your edge and you're just basically rolling the dice at that point. So Shake Shack, let's quick, quickly take a look at the short float on Shake Shack. Oh look, it's 73%. Another one of these crazy ass uh, stocks that are just being piled on short. And the higher the short percentage, the higher the squeeze if we get our move. So I'm interested again. Not interested back here, but it popped back up and it's been going sideways. After this nice day back here, it has not given back any of that price. It's just been consolidating sideways and creeping higher and creeping higher. And so Shake Shack, I've got set around uh, 38.18, I believe, which is right above the high of that one. So let's go back to our trade ideas alerts. And this wick right here is 38.18. We're gonna set a price alert above that. And we're gonna tick it one above to 19, that's where we want our, um, our alert to go off, and same thing. Second chance move for Shake Shack. Huge, well, let's spell it like Trump does, huge short float here, just in case I don't remember when that alert goes off. Give me a little extra knowledge in the heat of the moment. All right, there is that. Um, what else do I have for you? You know, uh, I'll get to that one in a second. PRAA is showing up with some interest, really like this one here. Um, nice sideways consolidation off of that low. Did not give back any price, but gave back over time. Sideways action is really nice. And we don't have too much of a move here. So essentially, I'm just looking at the high of today's bar, 31.96, and um, that's, uh, you know what, there's two schools of thought on this one, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to use the latter example on this one. Yeah, we could use today's high, but we had two nice green days here, and it, it, this is almost in chase territory. Even though it's, it's really not in my book, I, I want to set an example of a pullback alert, kind of like that one I did on Solar City last week and, and nailed the nice pullbacks. When you can nail those pullbacks, it gives you so much more staying power and much more wiggle room for your stop entries. So where might an interesting level be for a pullback on this one? Well, if we return to the scene of the crime, you've heard me say prior resistance can become future support, or vice versa. Prior support can become future resistance. And so in this case, we broke out of these levels here, um, you know, around, uh, what is that, 30, 30, oh, uh, I'm sorry, 3107, 3088, what's this high back here? 3093. So I'm going to use the high of this wick and maybe a little bit of slop underneath it. Just call it 31 and try and get maybe an intraday pullback. And we've got to do it a little differently on this one. I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm going to create the alert, 3100. But the system thinks we're going short because I put, I'm putting in a price below. And I'm not going short. I want to use this for a long. So if the system does trigger the alert, it's going to be calculated as a long trade in the P&L. And these are the ones that we set, um, that Jamie and I set um, on Monday for the group that was watching on Monday. We had about four or five of these go off, and they turned right around, dug in, and went higher. So um, these are always a good way, a methodology of you know not forcing yourself to, to not chase a stock. Try and look where it would make sense to pull back. And so in this case, I'm using the breakout levels of 31, roughly even, as a possible pullback. I'm going to recode this as a long. I'm going to call this a pullback. Fill. Bye. Hey, and Steve, uh, when you're done with that, you might want to show them an example of one that, that pops and goes, like the SWIR, the SWIR. 
yeah, let's see where we had our alert on that one um, because the voice of Jamie is bringing a good voice of reason here. Uh, SWIR set on Monday. It was from above, meaning we pulled back. The alert was from above. It triggered at 14.72, and it's got 85 cents under the belt. So when we were looking at SWIR on Monday, Jamie and I were talking, and there's the green alert triggered, showing you exactly where it went. Um, we talked about using, and thanks, I see what your thinking is there, Jamie. He's using the same methodology that I was just using here for, uh, for PRAA. Rather than chase it, try and find a level that makes sense and a prior resistance becoming future support is exactly what happened here on this one. Pullback, bam, much better entry price than chasing it way up here. So I appreciate you jumping in there and thank you for that, Jamie. The, uh, the PRAA is the exact same methodology that we're trying to do on that and uh, we'll keep an eye on that one. So as you can see again on the price alerts, we have set this one. We did all of these from below, but we just set an example of how to set an alert on a pullback trying to catch a better price, and so it will code here from above. And again, we made sure that we coded that as a long trade. All right, a couple more here, and then uh, I'm going to run. Of course, I'm going to share these with you. I've noticed, let me look at a couple of other charts here. Um, KBH, Home Builders. KBH has had a really nice run. Uh, some of the smaller ones, Hovnanian, three, four, five, really good green candles. Lennar, pretty nice move. Uh, there's one called Beezer Homes. Beezer Homes had a nice move, a little bit more fresh than the, than the rest of them. I kind of wish I had seen that earlier. But there is one that I'm going to watch here. Uh, it is a home builder. It's Toll Brothers. And look at this. We may have a lagger, folks. We may have somebody that's trying to play catch-up. So Toll Brothers, again, I'm using the methodology of the, uh, of the uh, uh, sectors, but moving higher. In this case, we've got what's possibly a lagger here. So we're going to go ahead and set. We're not chasing. I've got some nice bump up against resistance, pull back, get that battering ram, get the battering ram, pull it again, charge the front gates again. Maybe tomorrow it'll find its way through. So what's the high of today? Uh, 30.07. So we're going to go 30.08 and set this alert here. 3008, just remind myself, toll is lagging the home builders. So that's my thinking and methodology on that one for when it pops up. What was I thinking? All right, good. Uh, I got one more for you. Um, HDP, not really familiar with this stock. I don't like the way it's looking. Um, and I think this is going to be one where we're going to try and get a head start. I think it's really going to come and try and press this issue of the high end of this wick going back at 12.47. We're not quite at 12.47 yet, so I'd like to know if we make a new high uh, from today's candle, because if we do, I think we're going to go up and test that level. So this is another er early warning look here, uh, high of 12.14. Let's go 12.15, and let's call that, uh, let's just right-click and adjust it. 12.15, early look at resistance and possible break. All right, there are 10 uh, alerts that I've set for you. And I'm a little behind myself because I do want to get into one more topic today, which I had promised earlier, which was risk management, risk reward. Um, and let's get into that. But first, I do want to um, let me get that slide ready. First, I do want to uh, get these limit alerts out to you all. So what I'm going to do is show you how we do it. Uh, I have sorted. I have sorted by the date it was created. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight hit the shift key so I got all the April 13th in here and this is how you collaborate guys you just right click we're gonna share 10 selected price alerts I'm gonna copy this to my clipboard and I'm gonna pop this in the chat window so those of you that have the uh, functionality of AI and the premium subscription that link will make more sense to you uh, you can copy and paste that link, and all it really does is once you load from cloud, nothing's going to pop up and show you something happened. You just basically go back to your price limit alerts, and you'll see the timestamp of these April 13th dates mixed in there. All right, 
So enjoy those that have that function. This is great. Um, real quick, I'm going to go into what I promised to talk about, which ties into a trade of the week. And this is just some simple risk management uh, methodology that you can follow. It doesn't matter what type of account, what size account you have, it doesn't matter. I'm going to use an example of 30,000. And the 30,000 example is usually a, a good starting point. If you're going to day trade and avoid the pattern day traders rules and you want to be able to have margin, you got to have at least 25,000. You probably almost know that. So a lot of people start their accounts with 30,000 to give themselves a little bit of cushion. So we're going to use examples here on a $30,000 account. Now, I don't recommend um, risking any more than 1% of your total account. So, you know, if you're going to set up stop losses, your point of pain should really be no more than 1% of your account. This, that's the rule that I've always tried to adhere by. And so on a $30,000 account, a $300 stop loss is going to be your 1% risk in every trade. Well, how much capital should you um, put up on the trade? Not, not, the, not, not how much should you risk in a stop loss, but how much should you commit to the trade to get a good chunk? When uh, my good friend and trader Andy Lindloff uh, and I were doing the ditto trade account for three and a half years, people were um, attached to our account. And every time we made a trade, they got the same trade at the same fill price. We all got filled in the same block trade. It was a very cool technology, and we had a good time for three and a half years outperforming the market and helping people make some money. In that account, when we uh, took a, a size, we would usually start off around 10%, you know, or $3,000 of an account size like that. If we really wanted to scale in and press it up, we never really exceeded 20%. So 10 to 20% is usually a good chunk of allocation of your account to put towards um, any given type of trade, in my opinion. Now, these four steps below are dealing with how to set your stop loss. This is the most common question we usually get is, where should I put my stop loss and, and how much should I risk? Well, you shouldn't just walk in and say, all right, well, this is my entry. How much is $300 or this is where I want my entry to be? Uh, how much would three, $300 be and then just make that an arbitrary level to get out because the market doesn't care about your $300 stop loss. You need to have a technical reason to exit your trade and set an area of stop loss. So all you really need to do is first, number one, identify that technical level of where it makes sense for your stop loss. And then if it were me, I'd add another 10 cents just to try and not get picked off by the stop hunting algos and bots out there. So once you've identified your technical level, you need to size your share size according to that loss. So if that level is, say, a buck below your entry point, and your technical stop loss level is a buck below that, that's real simple math, that's 300 shares. You don't want to lose more than 300 bucks. If it's 50 cents wiggle room that you're giving yourself, well, you could go up to 600 shares. But the point is, is make sure that if you have to trigger that loss and take a loss, and you will, we all do, um, you know, make it count and move on to the next trade. Don't double down. Don't freeze in the, like a deer in the headlights. Just move on with your plan. And, um, you know, discipline over the long term can help uh, help you out greatly. So uh, the method, the, the the takeaway here is don't just you know find an arbitrary area to get out because you're down 300. You first identify that level and then scale in your sizing of your shares to use uh, that level, which would correspond with your point of pain in this example, 300 bucks. And the last one, number four, is when you're having a good day. Um, you know we should all have a circuit breaker when we have a good day. Think of a stock like a trailing a trailing stop. You get a really good stock that's moving and it's moving and it's moving and then it reverses on you and goes negative. I mean, you just want to punch yourself in the face for not taking anything off. Well, you can apply that same thinking to your daily P&L. Let's use an arbitrary example. Let's say you're an active trader and maybe you, you, you want to make a thousand bucks or maybe it's 500. I don't know, but let's use a thousand for easy easy numbers. The 20% rule that I've always used means if you hit your upside target level and you're having a good day, um, you really should lock in that. Uh, you need to lock in those gains. There's nothing psychologically more damaging than having a good day and then giving it all back just for lack of discipline or greed. But the 20% rule essentially says, you know, make it a sliding uh, trailing stop. If you're up a thousand bucks on the day, you're doing something right. You want to keep going. You want to keep pressing. Maybe you can turn it into 2,000. But if you just walk away because you hit that thousand dollar level, you're never going to have that opportunity. But if you give yourself a 20% sliding wiggle room there, you know, give yourself a couple hundred bucks to try and improve on that day. But if you pull back to 800, break it off, shut it down, go home, 
you know, like I said on Monday, there's a great book, The Art of War. A good general will reward his troops, give them a warm shower and a warm meal, and what else is ever in town, and um, it's good for the psyche. And so that's a good psychological rule. I've always said the 20% rule when you're having a good day, you know, put that into uh, into effect. I hear Barry a lot in the morning saying, "Well." That's my day, which is great. You know, he's doing some great stuff in the morning, but I know he's still taking little shots here and there towards the end of the day, you know, just to try and see if he can get something going. But uh, I know he's using good money management over there as well. But for me, I've, I've put it to words, and uh, the words I've put it to is the 20% rule. So that is my sermon for this evening. Those are the 10 stocks that I've just added to my watch list. And for those of you that have the watch list, you now have it added as well. Um, that's going to take up pretty much our full hour here. I will see you again next Wednesday night, possibly with Mr. Merkin, if he decides to show up as well. Either way, I love doing these. I um, appreciate all your questions, and I thank Jamie and, um, and Barry for helping me with some of those uh, questions and answers along the way. So this is a great time. Uh, again, <laughs> this AI Hall is having quite the week, and you know, I'll quote Dan. I agree with him. This is really one of the most... It, amazing products I've ever seen in fintech, and I think it's about to become one of the hottest products in, in the fintech industry. Um, but Scott's going to come on here now, and for those of you that are thinking about it, he's going to show you some really good promo codes. Like some people say, don't pay retail. Find out where the discount is, and Scott's going to show you where the discount is right now. Yeah, and we always do that for our, <clears throat> our webinar attendees. It's a way to thank you for showing up and learning about all our features and learning how to use our product better. Uh, if you could go ahead and throw the price sheet up, um, I think it's slide number eight on the stack. Uh, right so what up, saw, let me grab it. Yeah, yeah th so, some of you who might not be subscribers yet are may not know how our pricing is. We're a software as a service company, so uh, we're subscription based. Uh, our core subscription is a monthly. Um, it is a ninety-nine dollar per month. That includes everything, including all your real-time data, the exchange fees. Uh, charting, it gives you a full hour of one-on-one -on -one training with screen sharing with either Steve Gomez or Jamie Hodge. Uh, as soon as you sign up, by the way, go to the support section, click on training, and select your preferred time and date, get in there for that. Uh, you can also test the back testing tool, the odds maker, although you cannot test the AI. Uh, the annual saves you a bundle over the monthly per year, it's 888 per year, all that same great stuff. And to get the access to Holly, the AI, our price alerts, and the new functionality, and, and also our, our odds maker back testing tool. That's a one-time uh, license fee. It's $1,100, and that gets you all of that. Now, the good news is today you can save a bunch on that by using a code. If you go to the next slide there, you see it's Holly13, and that's good until end of business on Friday this week. Um, Holly needs to all be in caps. It is case sensitive on checkout, so H-O-L-L-Y 13. And what that does is takes half off your first month, so you can try us for 49 bucks. No contract, just give us a try. Get the training. Um, if you're already a monthly subscriber want to switch to the year, do that, save 20%, 7.10 for your first year. Just shoot us an email, let us know that you did that so we can make sure the monthly is uh, turned off. Uh, it'll take 30% off the lifetime AI, which is a great buy. Get it 70-70 lifetime instead of 1100 Great upgrade if you don't have it yet. And if you don't have either or if you're on the monthly and you want to get it all, um, you can go to a page on, and on the next slide we'll show you. Uh, you can go to this URL, bit.ly slash holly There we go. And what that'll do is that'll take you to a page where you can use the code. Actually, it should be Holly13. That The slide is wrong, uh, but your download will be correct. And um, it takes $500 off of your cost uh, immediately. So you can get it instead of $19.88, you get it for $14.80. Um, so if you want to get this to download, just go ahead to your handouts panel on your GoToWebinar interface and just download the PDF. That's got the same links and directions right there for you. Okay? Uh, it's been uh, great talking to everyone. Um, thank you, Steve, for the great presentation. Any questions, email us, info at tradeideas.com. Uh, you can follow Steve at Today Trader. Follow Dan at Trade Ideas one uh, Follow us on Facebook. We also post some stuff there we don't uh, do elsewhere. Facebook.com slash Trade Ideas Pros, how you find it. Uh, thanks all. There will be a... Um, Another educational webinar tomorrow um, at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern, uh, Jamie's Trading Studio with Steve Gomez. And um, you should be receiving invites in your email tonight, tomorrow morning, if you're on any of our lists. Thanks all. Good night. Thank you, Steve. Good night. Good night, Jamie. All right. Good night, Barry. Good night. Good night. Everyone.